In this video, we do another upgrade for the gate with a position sensor and one of these. We're back at the gate and this time we're gonna put a position sensor on the gate so I know if it's open or closed. And there's a few issues with that. Um, well, first of all, I need that sensor and that information so that I can do other automations, such as opening the gates automatically and knowing if they're open and should I open them. But this is an Acara door sensor or position sensor or contact sensor. And it's simple device. Everybody has one, it seems, on the internet that does home automation. They're very common. But two issues with that. They're not outdoor rated, so we're gonna fix that first of all. And they're Zigbee uh, connected. So the connection to Home Assistant is via Zigbee. And I don't have Zigbee connection at the gate, it's up at the house. So SM Light, a lovely Ukrainian company, has sent me a ton of stuff, including these three USB slash PoE adapter Zigbee repeater router things. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure exactly what the difference is other than the chipset on these, but what they do is that you plug them into PoE, which we now have at the gate, because remember, last video, go check that out. We put all that in with an edge switch, and I can then power these and hopefully get Zigbee signal down here so that I can know whether the gate's open or not. That's the plan. These are pretty cool. In fact, they send me a whole bunch of stuff. Um, because they're just lovely and I want to give them a really big plug, SM Light. They're pretty well known as well in the home automation industry. So if you haven't checked them out, go and use the link below and see all the different um, devices they have. I have a couple other videos playing actually with their devices that arrived as well. So stay tuned for that. But we're going to install this and we're going to put that Zigbee uh, contact sensor on the gate and then hopefully it all works in Home Assistant. That's the plan. But let's see what happens. So here's the box uh, of magic. <laughs> that was, if you didn't see the uh, Unifier Access Gate Intercom video, um, yeah, I just mentioned it before as well. Go, go check that out because that's where everything here was explained how it was set up. So go and do that. The crux of it is I now have extra ports in the edge switch for activities. So here's the plan. I'm gonna obviously put the Acara at the gate, but as I said, this is not outdoor rated. So, and I'll put the link below as well. Um, my good friend Dave, who has a 3D printer, has printed me this cover for it, which other people on the internet has said works for that. And I've, it, it fits in there, etc. right? So you put the sensor in there and we put that on and it's all happy and snug in there, right? So that should work. We should then have outdoor rated, because remember, this is just a magnet with a Zigbee control uh, repeater or um, sender, basically, right? So that's all we need. So that should work there. Then we're gonna take one of these. I think the black one, which is the 06 P7. It seems to be the newest one and it has a, a uh, Texas Instrument system on chip, which should work better with Home Assistant, but I'm not sure, but that's the plan. We'll start with that one and see if that works. Um, these, by the way, should work both as a router and a coordinator for Zigbee. So it should both be able to repeat the signal as well as control the whole network, which I don't want it to do because I already have a controller. Um, so we'll take that and we'll attach that with a, uh, a Cat6 cable, just a patch cable, into the switch, put that in here, and we should have Zigbee at the gate, is the plan. But uh, yeah, I'll show you how all that works in Home Assistant, or not work, whatever happens. <laughs> um, and, uh, and we'll go from there. But yeah, that's the, uh, that's the immediate plan. Okay, it's a couple of days later because I've figured out a few little quirks and little things that's worth knowing about the SM Light PoE Zigbee repeaters, uh, adapters, things. Um, and that is that 
I thought, or I was hoping maybe, that the Zigbee signal would go over the network, so PoE data would go into my local network and I would get sort of Zigbee over LAN, right, so that I could have remote Zigbee devices. A bit like my Bluetooth proxies work, if you haven't seen that video, go check that out. Um, whereas the signal is sort of translated from one protocol to another for Home Assistant. It's really, really handy with Bluetooth. I was hoping this would be similar. It is not. The PoE part of this is for power and internet connection only. It does nothing to do with the Zigbee. The Zigbee signal goes through the antenna. So there's that massive long antenna you saw that I uh, installed. That is what transmits and receives the uh, the signal. Now, the cool thing about these is that, it, is that it boosts the signal really, really well. So you have a 5 day, uh, dB antenna on it and a 20 dB um, amplifier basically inside of it. So when it gets a Zigbee signal, it will actually um, enhance it quite significantly. Now, in my case, as you can see here, I have a map of, well, the property here, right? There's 76 or roughly 80 meters from the house down to the gate. That is further than my uh, Philips Hue light bulbs will repeat that signal, that Zigbee signal, right? So I put it up down there. I put, I mean, say it, I mean, I put the SM light repeater up at the gate, hoping that it would get the signal. It does not. So I've now, in fact, installed a second one. So there's the first one, and I've installed a second one at the house where that dot is, roughly, about there. And it is now repeating the Zigbee signal that it gets there, which is strong. And it is actually picking it up at the gate now with the uh, the one you saw me install. That makes sense? So you need to have a Zigbee signal for this to work. You can't just magically make it up over the network. Now, once I realize that, cool. I just, I mean, luckily SM might send me three of these, right? So I set up a second one to repeat my signal. So they're really good for that, for boosting the signal. They worked really well because I had nothing down there before. Right, so I hope that makes sense. So bear that in mind as we move on through what this thing does. All right, so we're back in Home Assistant and I have now adopted these two SM Lite devices into the SM Lite integration. So let's just have a look at those first. There's the two, there's the P7, there's the black box. That's the one that's at the gate. And the 06 with no more letters or numbers is the one that's put up at the house. The difference between those two is the chipset. So the black box, the one at the gate has a CC2652P7 chipset, hence the name P7. And the other one has a CC2652P chipset, so not seven. Please tell me in the comments what the difference is and if there's any real difference between the two. Um, I'm not sure where they are. They look very similar in what I can see. Um, so if we go to the P7 here, you can see that the, um, the, 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 the properties that you get for your Home Assistant integration is you can disable the LEDs, LED night mode, and then you can update the firmware and the Zigbee firmware and check for updates. That's kind of neat. And then you have some, some diagnostics down here. And uh, it says connection mode USB, it isn't. There is a USB port on it. I have not connected it, so I'm not sure about that. Uh, you get some chip temperatures for the, the actual core chip and the Zigbee chip. And then you can see Ethernet's connected and uh, the firmware channel is development. I don't think you can change that. I think they only come in development, but yeah. And then the Zigbee tab is set to router. That's the key, that's important, okay? So if you're new to Zigbee networks, all Zigbee networks have a coordinator, one coordinator that manages the whole network. Think of on Unify, it's like your network controller, right? There's one. In my case, it's UDMSE. Uh, in this case, for a Zigbee network, it's my Conp2, that's the coordinator. So this is a router or repeater. This is one that just enhances the signal and sends it back to the coordinator. So I hope that makes sense that you need to have a, a Zigbee signal where you install the SM light repeater uh, or coordinator. So, and the reason I found this out is that here on the docks buried somewhere, it is the 06 as Zigbee router. And it says here, use only a wireless connection to work with the Zigbee network or PoE connection, like a regular Zigbee device. So your device must be in the coverage area of your main coordinator, right? It must be within the network. So yeah, really important point, um, just in how this device works. 
Now, each of these devices get an IP address on the network, of course. And when you go to that IP address, you actually get to the whole control plane or panel of this device. And it's it's pretty neat. There's a lot of information, a lot of stuff you can do. Here is the dashboard. This is an overview of, you know, showing you general status and device information and things like that. Um, some of these are surfaced into home system as well, such as the temperatures. The mode is the, one of the important ones. So here's where you can change the way that this device works. Now they come usually, I think, out of the box as Zigbee coordinators. So that's if you're setting up a new Zigbee network and you use these as the coordinator, as the controller for your Zigbee network. I didn't have to do that. So I changed it to Zigbee router. When you change these, if I click on this, it'll actually download a different firmware version and install that on the device. So it's a little bit involved changing it, but super simple. Not involved, but it, there, there's things going on, but you don't have to worry about it. You just click the button. Um, so I have it set up as a Zigbee router. You can even enable a Bluetooth proxy, which is what I talked about before uh, for Home Assistant. So basically you get Bluetooth signal through Wi-Fi or through your, connect, your network connection into Home Assistant. So you can enable that. Go check out that video if you haven't. Uh, it's a really, really cool feature um, for Home Assistant. And then there's the connection mode. Um, this says USB connection, and I don't know, I keep changing it to Ethernet connection. And obviously it is Ethernet connection, that's the only way they're connected. So I haven't, inter I haven't put, plugged in a USB cable, I haven't uh, entered Wi-Fi credentials. So I'm not sure why I keep changing it back, I've just left it now. I'm like, okay, as long as you're happy and work, I don't mind. <laughs> um, you can see the network here. So here's your uh, Ethernet options, and then again, it's on Ethernet, hence it has an IP address on the Ethernet. Um, there's the mask. Wi-Fi setup, I haven't actually set that up, which is why it has uh, the uh, still has an IP address here uh, through the LAN. If you need um, options for um, uh, Zigbee to MQTT or uh, Zigbee Home Assistant, they're in here. You can change those if you need to change them for if you use different ports or whatever. Um, and you can also um, set up some other things here, which I haven't actually played with. Uh, advanced. I don't do advanced. I'm not good enough for that. Yeah. Uh, security. Of course, you can set up password, authentication, etc. for this interface if you need to. If you have many people on your network, who knows? Um, so that's here. And then you can even set up WireGuard uh, with it if you want to access it. Um, you know, secure connection, which is quite neat. I haven't used that here. Um, but that's that's kind of a really cool cool uh, added feature, and then we have all the settings, general settings. You give it a name. You can restart it. You can you know router reconnect if somehow it, it drops out. You can click that. Um, you can do firmware updates, which is uh, over the air, uh, and you can do custom ones as well. They do. It's very tinkery these devices. You can do a lot with them. LED settings, sure. You can change the LEDs. Uh, time settings. So you can set your time zone. Uh, for some reason, it keeps changing that back as well. I did change that, but again, I don't really mind, whatever. And you can log, there's some logs here as well, which could be helpful. So there's a lot you can do in this interface and there's one for the other one as well, which looks identical for the other controller. That's why I'm like, I'm not sure what the difference is between the two, they seem to do the same thing. Okay. Um, which means that now in Home Assistant, um, there's one more quirk I think we should uh, know about here. So if I go back to my integrations, um, if I go to ZHA and I go to the 40 devices, these two are not actually showing up as devices on ZHA. It's like they just, if you're a router, it just repeats the signal and facilitates communication. Um, where other repeaters and routers I've used have shown up as a device, these don't seem to be. Uh, you can see here's my Compi2 is there. That's my coordinator. Um, and then just as all the different devices that are on this network, such as I have now added at the gate, we have a gate uh, position sensor. So that's now connected to that. Well, it has to be because, <laughs> well, or, or this one, of course, I mean, I can't control that, but it has to be because otherwise there would be no connection down there. Um, and this works beautifully. You can see I was testing this uh, last night. So it was open, closed, open, closed, open, closed. Um, and uh, this is just a label, by the way, opening. If you ever see these labels, you can just change it. I don't know why it comes up default as opening, 
because it could also be closing. I usually just tell, change it to status, but it doesn't matter. And then I put a temperature sensor in the control box itself as well, because I want to see the, the temperature, um, well, and humidity for that matter, but I want to know the temperature. So now it's early morning, so it's only 27 degrees in there. It's summer, um, <laughs> but that's really good to know if, because I'm probably gonna have to add fans, right? It starts getting hot in the sun. Uh, it's mostly out of the sun, but still it gets like 50 degrees in that box. And that seems bad in the long run, so I'll probably add some fans, but it works. Yeah, so that's the range of Zigbee repeaters, Zigbee coordinators from SM Light. And again, there's there's quite a few different models. I still haven't put this one in, which is the 06M. And again, please tell me in the comments if they do different things. Um, SM Light was very kind to send me all this. It's a very innovative and very responsive company from Ukraine. Um, I, I, I mean, check them out. Use the link below in the description because they seem to have a lot of cool stuff. Um, in fact, I have a couple other videos planned with the other bu bunch of stuff that they sent me. So these are really cool. And I have Zigbee connection at my gate. Um, yeah, so just be in mind, and again, I'll recap. If you want Zigbee signal repeated, you have to have the actual Zigbee signal. Not like me thinking that these would, would somehow magically do it over PoE, which would have been awesome, but apparently that's not possible. Um, these does, they do um, show up as coordinators in Home Assistant to start with. So if you don't want that, if you already have a coordinator, then you need to go into the firmware and change it to a router. That is probably the key. And then Maybe they show up as Zigbee, maybe they don't. I don't think they do. I had one show up, but it was because it was a coordinator, I'm pretty sure. And then if you try and add that, it goes, nah, you can't have two coordinators. So I changed it to router and then they don't show up, but they just seem to work. So um, I now have much larger Zigbee network. So let me know what you think in the comments. Um, there's probably a bunch of details that I didn't cover that you have questions about. So put them down there and I'll be happy to answer as best as I can. If you enjoyed the video, as always, consider subscribing to the channel. That would really help me out. This year, 2025, I want to reach 50,000 subscribers. Big ask, but with your help, I can certainly make it, I'm sure. Um, and that would just allow me to do many more things, like videos like this. So please help out or check out the merch or put a comment down below or super thanks or put a thumbs up. Whatever you can do would be really helpful. And um, okay, I think that's all for this video. It's a little hodgepodge because it threw me off a bit, but I think I covered all the things so you don't have to go through the same thing. Uh, and in another case, I'm going to go play with the gate, <laughs> which I have two more updates coming for, actually, because it'll never be done, will it? Not really. All right. Okay. I'll see you next time. Bye.